Hello and welcome back to part 3. Now that we've set up our model we are ready to export it. I will show you how to do that and which pitfalls to avoid. When you scroll down in the Phobos tab you will find the export area and the first thing you should notice is the path. Right now it's in the folder above your current folder and your current folder is actually the location where your blender file is located. Um, I want to have it at a different path so I will browse for it and change it. Now in theory exporting would be really simple now, but you will see there are some things to consider. First a quick note, if you have the selected only checkbox set to off, then Phobos will search automatically for available models in your scene. We want to export URDF for now and then we click on export model. And if you check in the folder you can see there is nothing. And to get a hint why this might be the case you can scroll up and then go for the model information. And if you activate this tab, you will see error messages in the bottom right. Here it says, material none is not defined, and the reason for that is that I didn't set the texture for the eyes of the rover. So if I do that, it will um, work out just fine without this error message. So I fixed that now, and I hit export again, and you can see it also always selects the model that it exported and shows the link names. But when you check the folder, there actually is nothing again. And the reason for that is when I selected the new path, it actually didn't delete the relative path. And um, as you can see, here's my Blender file. And when I now go up one step and then follow the path that I actually set up as the absolute path, it, uh, and interpreted that as a relative path. And because of that, I have this huge chain. And at the end, you can find the URDF. So the export actually worked, but it put that at the wrong location, so pay really close attention to the path. So I will fix the path now, and uh, you can see it gives, still gives me an error. This is because I forgot um, to add my home directory here. And if I click now again, um, I actually get an error again. And um, first let me check in the folder. Um, you can see that your dev has been actually generated. So why do I get an error here? Uh, the reason is that I am currently in edit mode and as I said previously after you clicked export it wants to select um, all models that it exported and because I'm in edit mode it can't really find the objects and that's the reason why it gives you that error. So if you go into object mode and hit export again you don't get the error message anymore. Now, if we have a first look at the generated URDF, you can see that for the geometries, it actually um, chose the same geometries as we set in the defined geometries in Phobos. So, where we chose cylinder or box, it added cylinders or boxes with the appropriate sizes. And where we selected mesh, you can see that it added a path to a mesh, and the name of the mesh is actually what we defined in Blender. So, if I rename it here in the tree, and hit export again and uh, search for that name you can see that it um, exchanged the cube one that it was previously to the body mesh so you can rename that as you like. Now you might have noticed that in the URDF the collision definitions are missing and the reason for that is that in order to export anything it can't be hidden in Blender you have to unhide it and then click export again and now you can find the collision models in the URDF. If you want to export your meshes, just select the file format in the export tab. For example, I selected here the collada.dae format and the SCL file format for 3D printing. Um, if one of your meshes doesn't appear in the export, uh, make sure that it's not hidden in Blender and that you define the Phobos geometry type as mesh and not as a primitive type such as a box, sphere or cylinder. So for example, here you can see all the meshes were visible and now we have five meshes. One is for the body and then there is one uh, for each wheel. But the meshes for the head have not been generated because they are defined as primitive meshes in Phobos and not as the mesh type. Now that we have created our URDF and also the meshes, we are ready to create the ROS workspace. Um, I will create a really simple one here with just a single package and then I will 
copy the URDF and the meshes inside that workspace and also make a folder for the launch file. And um, this launch file is used just to inspect the URDF and the meshes and if they look correct and you can play around with the joints. Um, it looks like this. I will not go into the details of it. I created a git repository for you where you can find this launch file. Just make sure to replace all occurrences of package names and paths to the paths and package names that correspond to your workspace. And there is also an Arvis config that belongs to this launch file. Um, just create an Arvis folder in your workspace and put it inside there. And then there is only one final thing that we have to correct until we can see the robot and ROS. And that are the paths to the meshes. If you look into the URDF, you can see the path is defined in this relative format. And I don't know if it's a problem with the launch file, but it doesn't work like this um, with this launch file. So you have to change that and you have to first define the package. Uh, so first write package colon slash slash and then the package name. And after that, the relative path in the package. And um, because you have to do that multiple times, I use Atom and use multiple cursors by pressing Ctrl D. I know this is not a perfect solution and I would like to improve this, so if you have any suggestions, I'd be really grateful for that. But yeah, um, once you do that, you can run the launch file and now you can see the rover in ROS. And you can actually move the joints and um, you can see it moving and the collision files are also there. So this is already a great success in my book. But you will notice here that the hat is looking kind of weird and uh, we will fix that now. So previously I parented the eyes to the box of the hat and then the head to the neck and I assume that this is not working correctly so I will unparent this by hitting Alt P and um, then parenting all the objects to the link and hopefully then it will work. After creating the URDF I have to copy it into the workspace again and then do the renaming of the package paths again and here you can see why I don't like this approach because it's, get, it's getting annoying if you have to make changes um, but I'll go through it for you really quick in the time lapse here and um, now we are in Arvis again and you can see we improved, but it's not quite right yet. You can see that in the visual tab there's one eye and then in the collision tab there's the other one. I did some investigation and I noticed that clearing the parents in the way I did didn't work. So first in the top right corner you can see in the tree that we have two objects that are not parented to anything. And this is the head and the right eye. Um, if you select an object with Blender with right click and um, there's another object right on top of that, uh, you can just click right click again and it will select that that's behind that. So in that way you can uh, get the correct eye. Of course you can also just click on the object in the tree. And um, after selecting that eye or an empty head, um, I parented them to the link again with bone relative mode. Now as you can remember the other eye was also kind of corrupted and when you scroll down you can see that it's still parented to the head and not to the link so I removed the parent by clicking Alt P again and then parented to the link and now we should be good. Now after going through the process of adjusting the package paths again we are now back in Avris and you can see that the eyes are now correct. Um, the only thing that is now still kind of weird is this offset between the neck and the head. And if you check the collision model, you can actually see that for the collision model the, there is no offset, it's actually correct. And yeah, honestly I didn't check where this error was coming from. I just looked at the URDF and I could see the difference in the visual and in the collision model. And I just uh, changed that. I know this is just a hack and this error has to be investigated further, but I didn't do it here. But yeah, if we go now into Arvis and look at the model again, you can see now it's looking really good. And I'm happy with that. And now we can go to the export to Gazebo and Kura.
Okay, now to export to Gazebo, just activate the STF file format in the export tab and then it will ask you if you also want to export the model.config. I just looked at other models and there was also the model config so I generated it. Um, maybe you're smarter here in the Gazebo than me. Um, yeah. Then it also gives you the export to Gazebo model folder um, option. Um, in the settings of Phobos you can set this path. Um, I believe if you set this path it will then export to that path if you activate the option. Then you can just hit export and it will generate the SDFs. And if you open Gazebo you will see um, that there is this model path here and I just copied my model also to that path. Now if your model doesn't appear in Gazebo just try restarting it so it refreshes the path. And um, after that I still had some issues when I tried to place the model. Um, I couldn't see it and Gazebo actually kind of froze. There were two issues. Um, one was that I didn't put the meshes into the Gazebo folder. And um, the second one was that I didn't put them in the correct path. So you can look into the SCF file and there you will find the path for the meshes and actually for the whole model. The root folder of your model in Gazebo will be defined as the name of your model in Phobos. So you can probably just change the SDF if you don't like it, or you change the name in Phobos, um, that's up to you. But after that you should be able to place your model. I had some weird issues with it, um, I'm not that fluent in Gazebo. Some of the joints were just turning and um, the coordinate system was moving relative to the object and I'm really not sure if this is a gazebo issue that I don't know or if this is an issue with the export. Um, maybe someone else can let me know. But in the end we were able to put the model into gazebo and I was also quite happy with that overall. Now the last thing that remains now is the export to Cura in order to be able to 3D print the model. For that I export the model as STL files and then I open Cura and I just navigate to the correct folder and hit open. And you can see now that we have the wheels and the body of the rover. One thing you'll notice is that the wheels are not scaled correctly. For some reason they're kind of distorted in their width. I'm also not sure here why this happened and I would also put it into the future work category. I'm not sure if this is a problem of the export of the SL files or if this is a Cura issue. Um, again, if you know about this, let me know. And the other thing that is also important is that we don't have the meshes for the head here. And as mentioned previously, in theory you just have to declare the objects as meshes and export them. And in fact it will export them, but if you then import them into Cura for some reason they don't really match the expected objects and I'm also not sure here why this is the case so there is some future work to be done um, but I will conclude here and I hope it was helpful for you and yeah see you again. <laughs>